SpaceX Raptor engine is one of the most powerful rocket engines in the world. With 350 bars, it holds the record for the highest chamber pressure of all rocket engines. And it will be the main driver of the success of Starship. So, how does SpaceX Raptor engine work? It utilizes the full flow stage combustion cycle to produce thrust. The schematic of the cycle is shown here to better understand the working principle of the engine. The fuel is shown in red color in the scheme. The fuel exits the tank and directly enters the fuel pump, where the pressure of the fluid is increased. After that, the flow splits into two paths. The larger volumetric flow enters directly into the fuel-rich pre-burner, where most of the fuel is burned with a small portion of oxidizer. And the other portion of the main flow enters the oxidizer-rich pre-burner. After the fuel is burned within the fuel-rich pre-burner, the hot gas enters the turbine. The turbine sits on the same shaft as the pump and therefore drives the pump. Behind the turbine, the gases are directed into the combustion chamber, where all of the fuel is burned with the oxidizer. The assembly is symmetric, therefore the oxidizer is going through the same components as the fuel. It enters at first the pump, after that it splits into two flows, the smaller portion going to the fuel-rich preburner and the larger portion going to the oxidizer-rich pre-burner. Again, the hot gases out of the pre-burner are driving the turbine, which is on the same shaft as the pump. Finally, the oxidizer is led into the combustion chamber. Let's see how this works in reality. Here's a picture of the Raptor engine shaft. The most important components are above the nozzle, so let's take a closer look. The most visible part of the engine is the fuel turbo pump, which is located on the side of the engine and marked in white. Here we can identify most of the components we have already seen in theory. The fuel inlet is located on top of the turbo pump. The next red circle marks where the actual centrifugal pumps are positioned. The Raptor engine utilizes a two-stage centrifugal pump to increase the pressure of the fuel more efficiently. On the left you can see the pump exit pipe marked with red arrows. The flow out of the centrifugal pump goes at first through the main fuel valve and then further down to cool the combustion chamber throat and nozzle wall. After the fuel has cooled the walls of the engine, the fuel itself has a higher temperature. The fuel is then collected on two ports and flows through pipes to the fuel-rich pre-burner marked here with an orange circle. There the fuel is burned with a tiny portion of the oxidizer. You can see the pipe in which the oxidizer flows to the pre-burner on the left side, marked with blue arrows. Because the amount of oxidizer which is burned in the pre-burner has to be regulated, a second recirculation pipe can be seen on the left. After the fuel is burned, the hot gases enter the fuel-rich gas turbine, which is located above the pre-burner. Here the power to drive the centrifugal pump is generated. The hot gases exit the turbine on the right side. The exit pipe leads to the injector head. Here both the fuel and oxidizer are injected into the combustion chamber. Now that we have identified most of the components of the fuel turbo pump, we can move on to the oxidizer turbo pump. The oxidizer turbo pump is located directly above the injector head and combustion chamber on the center axis of the engine. Because of the secondary equipment, the turbo pump is hard to identify in most of the pictures of the engine. I selected here a picture where the oxidizer turbo pump is at least partly visible in the white circle. The big pipe on top of the engine is the oxidizer inlet. Beneath the inlet sits the first and second stage of the oxidizer centrifugal pump. The casing of the pump has dark gray color and is marked here with a dark blue circle. In contrast to the fuel tube pump, here the pressurized oxidizer out of the centrifugal pump enters directly the oxidizer rich pre-burner. The casing of the pre-burner has again dark gray color and is marked with the blue circle. After the pre-burner follows directly the oxidizer rich turbine which has a light gray colored casing and is marked in light blue. I think the setup of the assembly is hard to understand with all the components in the way. I tried to overlap the picture with a scheme of how the inside of the turbo pump could look like. The result of this can be seen here. Again, the oxidizer enters the turbo pump at the top. After that, the first and second stage centrifugal pumps are following. Next, the oxidizer enters the pre-burner and lastly flows through the turbine. I hope this picture makes some of the explanations clearer. The more complex parts of the engine are now identified. The more common engine parts are located below the oxidizer turbo pump. These include injector, combustion chamber, throat and nozzle. The configuration is marked here with a white circle. 
in the beginning, we already talked about the fuel going through the engine walls for cooling reasons. In this picture, we can see tour circuits marked in black, which go around the engine walls. The main functions of the circuits are providing a larger cooling volume flow to the most critical parts of the engine walls and to collect the fuel for the backflow to the preburn. The injection head, as earlier mentioned, sits directly beneath the oxidizer rich turbine and in this picture to the left of the fuel rich turbine. The location is marked here with a right circle. From the layout of the engine you can also identify the contour of the combustion chamber, the contour of the throat and of course the contour of the nozzle. In this video the most important components of the engine have been identified. If you see common pictures of the reactor engine there are a lot more complex lines. These lines are mainly for starting the engine, also called spinner which is an extremely complex procedure for a full-flow cycle engine. Also, some lines are for hydraulics. In addition, you can see smaller components. These are mainly electronics and sensors. I regard to this as secondary equipment, which is not necessary to understand the main engine, even though in the future deeper dives into the secondary equipment could be done. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching. I will post similar content in the future.